It seems like if a business consults with a safety advisor, and for example, if that safety advisor is fairly new and they give them the incorrect information because there's many rules and requirements here to be aware of, who's liable in that situation? Is it the safety advisor that gave them the advice or information, or is it the business, the PCBU, the officer of the PCBU? It's always the officer of the PCBU, but there's what they call the proportion of blame. If I've given, safety has given massively incorrect guidance that could be and likely to be taken into effect. Obviously, we do the best we can to not do that. And so we have our evidence and traceability that's built into, into work. If there's something we're doing, it becomes an action. That action can have comments in until it's resolved. Now, bigger organisations, as I said, they can have a full-time person that they can validate the expense. And even that person that works for the company, they're a worker, there would be a proportion of blame if they massively point them in the wrong direction. But as a rule, the officer of the PCBU, it's their obligation to consult and make decisions because they're the only ones that can make decisions on the direction of the company where money is spent and what they're going to build or the services they provide. So it relies with them. It gets complex again when there's multiple PCBUs, so multiple offices. So you can say a multi-storey building with lots of tenants, a shopping centre, you know, for example, would have multiple offices of PCBUs and all obliged to consult. Is it working perfectly, the legislation around Australia? I would be surprised if it was, but certainly I know of many people either wanting to do it trying to understand and make the effort. And I think it's a growth time for legislative understanding or guidance or organisations that provide that for business like Safety Hub. There's been a lot go into where we are at the moment. As I say, always we're likely to make mistakes and we do, but we quickly sort it out and ensure that not only the client where we've learnt the lesson is provided with those tools and educated, uh, like even if there's new legislation, you know, ensure that incorporated, we automatically put that out to all our other clients. So if there's a need for a new policy to be written, like family and domestic violence, for instance, is one that some time ago came in, is that it's automatically rolled out to everybody else. That was in video format as well, wasn't it, Bruce? So it's a little bit easier for clients to digest. That's correct. Um, and it's all on, all on work as well, which is quite convenient too. Thank you for watching. This short video is part of a longer podcast that can be found on the Safety Out YouTube channel, as well as Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you found this information helpful, then please like, share, and subscribe to see more videos like this one. Also, if you have any Australian and New Zealand workplace and fire safety related questions that you'd like Bruce to answer on the podcast, then feel free to leave a comment below and we'll answer it in the next week's podcast. For more in depth information and inquiries, you can also schedule a free call with Bruce directly by visiting safetyhut.com.au.